Tim Collins, we're coming today. I'm now with Dale Greer at the Coleman Economic Development Agency. Dale, congratulations. You just got a promotion. Uh, yes, sir, I did. Now, you've been the assistant director down here for 24 years, something like that? I guess. And to start with, there was only Peggy and I. I officially have the title of assistant director now. I'm not exactly sure when that came in, but I guess when there were two of us and she was the director, I was kind of automatically the assistant. Oh, and, you know, we've had a, a great relationship over the years uh, and worked projects together and uh, got on most things on when we were talking about how to do things. We collaborated on them and discussed how to do it. And, you know, ultimately she was the boss and we came down to disagreement and say yes ma'am and we'd go with what her opinion was. But we've had a really good relationship and a good team. Well, you obviously been successful. You're the number two micropolitan district in the whole United States. Two years running, have been in the top ten consistently for years. Super low unemployment rate. A lot of good things have happened in Coleman. So you've been an awesome team. And I don't think there's anyone who could argue with that. Who's going to be your assistant director? Who's going to be the new you? You know, I don't, I don't know that I have a director at this point. I'm going to be able to, one of the really good positive things about this deal is that I will be able to call on Peggy and work with Peggy. She'll be going to the Chamber of Commerce and be involved there in their strategic plan, which I think is a plus on a separate angle. But I have her there if I need to talk about projects, how we work on what we do. So it's a great resource. She's been here for years. And, you know, I mean, it'd be really positive to be able to call on that. Uh, you know, she'll be working with the chamber on their strategic plan. Well, she's been involved in our part for decades. And she knows exactly what we do and how we do it and out of the city, but has done things with the county and some of the small towns. And I think she truly would be able to help ensure that the strategic plan Converging for Success focuses on true gaps, uh, where we need to fill in some pieces and not have duplication. And I think duplication of effort dooms a lot of projects. Makes sense. Well, now for the average person who probably doesn't think too much about economic development or what goes on in your office, for the average person, can you explain what the office here does and, and, and what a director's role is? Uh, you know, it, it, it's pretty difficult. I, I think we are the sales or marketing team for the community, but it truly is a partnership in, in every aspect. Um, maybe a, a best description is we talk about what is here, land building sites that they come and look at and the infrastructure and how you would serve those facilities. And then you bring in a group of people who are looking more at the workforce and do you have the labor to support that project? And, and then maybe wave three is a group coming in that is going to live here. And then the entire project is quality of life. They want to know about the health care and the education system and park and rec. And this community shows extremely well in all of those areas. And economic development is an elimination process. They start out with a number of communities that meet their basic requirements. And every phase of that operation then is to take out some of those communities. And your goal is not to win the project when you're talking, but to stay in and not be eliminated. And bringing whoever to the table at that particular meeting, if they're a heavy electric user, you want the electric company. If they're a heavy water user, maybe water. If they need engineering services or specific training out of uh, education system you bring to college you talk those pieces we try to bring whoever's the best fit for that particular meeting well now Dale, the answer you gave is i know your most simplistic least complex answer you can give i don't think i even understood what you just said it's a tough <laughs> job is what it is <laughs> most days most days now it is very very rewarding now, now we, in the beginning of this interview we talked about the success you've had helping come and become what it's become but the world's changing out there. Uh, what is your vision for the future? Uh, what do you see Coleman becoming under your leadership going forward? Well, you know, I, I really have a strong team here. Uh, there's a good group of people, very talented. Uh, they've done a good job for years as well. Uh, several of them have been with me. God, I think Jamie's in uh, year 17 or 8. They don't get on to me about those. Both her and Susan have been here for a long time, very, very capable. So that will be helpful. Uh, but you're exactly right. You, I think you have to have flexibility in looking at what you do within a program. You and I talked a little bit before you turned the camera on that 20 years ago, we did not have an automotive manufacturer, a tier one automotive. Uh, now three of the top manufacturers in this county are tier one automotive. All three of them are international companies that you had very little of in the past. 
You know, so all of that is a significant change. You mentioned at the top of the thing that workforce now is an issue, very low unemployment rates. I think that is occurring in Alabama for sure and nationwide, that workers are becoming more and more difficult to find. I think that in our situation, we're not going to be, you know, I hope they don't judge me on us continuing to be the number one county in Alabama for new and expanding industry, because I think that is becoming difficult with our unemployment rate around 5% with uh, difficulty in obtaining industrial sites and the expense of setting those up. I think you're going to have to begin targeting more things like we've done in recent years, which is research and development, uh, more brain power, I believe. And then I think you're also going to have to look at things like that Sequence Health Project. That's a health, a medical call center type deal. They don't want to be called call center. They like the term contact, but there are nurses there. You know, we are building them a 15,000 square foot building on eight acres of property. They can double the size of that building. They told the state they would commit to 128 jobs, but they see 300 in that 15,000 square feet and up to uh, 500 totally when they expand the project. And that is a totally different market for us. So it is people that, you know, 40% of the 5,500 students at Wallace are in healthcare programs. You just created a number of job opportunities for a great number of those students. It makes sense. Well, you know, what you're talking about is, I, and I may be trying to be Nostradamus here, but I think you'll be remembered for what you've done to this point. But now you have a whole separate uh, second half of the ball game where you'll be remembered what you're going to do. So uh, hmm. I'm not going to let you off that easy. <laughs> you know, the, the second half of the ball game sometimes is pretty daggum critical, you know? It is critical. The, I, I, I think some of the things we'll do in changes, we've got to focus more on bringing in people and retaining people. Uh, we still have 30% of our labor force that's driving out of town to jobs in Birmingham and Huntsville and Decatur. I'd like to try to turn some of those around and give them that two extra hours with their family. You know, but it's got to be jobs that fit them, things that we need and can deal with. Um, you know, so I think just the flexibility there, the willingness to change and uh, to work in areas that you need to. Uh, I see a need for uh, broadband, uh, fiber, you know, if you can have voice and data communication, I've got a bug that just landed on the glasses. You know, if you can have voice and data communication, it doesn't matter where you are in the world, you can solve a lot of problems if you have the ability to communicate and provide the information that people need from those sites. Well, and we talked about this earlier, it's no disrespect from the town of Trimble, but my family lives out there. Uh, your family's out there. It's hard to get an internet signal. In the rural areas, it is, yes. and in a lot of Alabama. I mean, that's not just the Coleman County issue, and a number of different groups are looking at that now and how to improve that service, and I think very, very quickly that all of that will be done. We'll have greater communication capabilities, but they both receive and send in those areas. Well, let me ask you one last question. I think it might be the most important, at least for me, is it's all about the workforce. If we can have people who are available to work in whatever industry you might bring in, we win. We've got Wallace College, Coleman City School System, County School System. We've got plenty of people. How, how do we make the magic happen where they stay in Coleman and get them trained for what's coming? I mean, that seems like the nexus. That's, that's where it all takes place. Uh, I, I think you're exactly right. I think we've done a poor job. I think we've done a very good job of recruiting here, of having some job opportunities and creating jobs. But I think where we have failed probably is in explaining what types of jobs they are, that they're not dead end, that there's some uh, real opportunities there for income and advancement. And, uh, so maybe we have to target that. But then again, you also have to recruit some people, the millennials that you hear all about. We've got to continue to improve the community where they want to live here. We've got to bring some of those people back who are commuting out of town. Uh, I think that could be a focus. And then Alabama has a uh, an, an issue where you have a large number of people that do not have a high school equivalent education and less than 10% uh, of the jobs now that people without some education beyond high school are capable of holding. You know, many of those manufacturing jobs, they're not physical heavy labor. They're programming computers or robots and dealing with those. You may be wearing a white lab coat instead of a, uh, you know, a grease jacket or something, if that makes sense. It makes sense. Well, that's plenty to think about. That ought to keep you busy for another 20, 25 years. <laughs> well, let's, let's, let's take 
one day and one year at a time. How about that? That sounds good. Dale, thanks so much for talking to me. Congratulations, June 1st, the new director of Coleman Economic Development, Dale Greer. Thank you.